Greetings, dear friends. We continue our work focusing our group intention on the common good. Through meditation and group reflection, we invoke and evoke the common good and manifestation of the new Aquarian civilization based on the principles of freedom, brotherhood and common good. In this cycle, we work with the energies of cancer. And in this day following the new moon in cancer, we come together to focus our group understanding and focus the thought forms that we would magnetize through our meditation and ready to humanity. Thought forms that will help and guide human family in this period of great transition. The topic of our uh, work in this cycle is emergence of the new civilization through growth of humanity's consciousness. Today is the third time we uh, me meeting to focus and share on this topic. We started at the Gemini Solar Festival, invoking the vision, asking the guidance and uh, understanding of what thought forms are key and what are the principles and spiritual laws are guiding us in this time and then we had a quarter moon meeting where we had the opportunity to share more and today we come for our meditation so let's start with the recalling the purpose of our work. Uh, over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Alexander. So in this month of Cancer, with our topic of the emergence of the new civilization, through the growth of humanity's consciousness. We're working with the water element on the Cardinal Cross. Um, and we're remembering our purpose in this project, which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation, which focuses group intention for the common good which brings spiritual laws and principles to life and which magnetizes spirit saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. So as we work within the water element on the Cardinal Cross, we explore this topic, emergence of the new civilization through the growth of humanity's consciousness. And we work within the energies of cancer, as Alexander said, and this sign is represented from the angle of the light as the light within the form. So we're reminding ourselves that it is the portal to incarnation embodying the law of rebirth and cycles. Cancer brings us both active intelligence and synthesis of expression on the physical plane where the illumined disciple builds his lighted house. So let us hold this influence and our purpose for the common good 
in mind, in the atmosphere of cancer, as we come together today in group alignment through our naming circle. So we remember that the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So we'll begin our alignment by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, you can follow the alphabetical list in the attendees tab. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you're calling in from. For example, Rebecca, Rebecca Hood, calling in from the Sunshine Coast in Australia. So as we go through, let us keep our attention on our hearts and the heart center of the group. Everyone gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. So starting today with Tracy Arbor. So I would like to call Tracy into the, into the circle. Um, she has uh, difficulties with her voice today. So just calling Tracy Arbor in. Alexander. Uh, Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Annette Lofla. This is Annette Lofla from Denmark. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, United States. Welcome. Fred uh, doesn't have a mic, so just I'm, I'm hoping that you saw the access code and everything in the chat box, Fred. Um, please send us a message if there are any other problems. And Welcome, Fred. Jillian. Hello, uh, Jillian from North Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Giovanni. You are unmuted, Giovanni. Welcome, Giovanni. Gloria. Hello, Gloria. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I am sorry in no speak english oh, thank you just say your name and where you are giovanni <laughs> thank
Thank you for speaking. We have heard your voice. That is good. Welcome. So sorry, Gloria. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm from calling from Sweden. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. John. Seems to be a problem with John's uh, connection. The, his mic is not active at the moment. Hopefully welcome. We yeah. yeah, we hope you can hear us. John, welcome. Josette. Hello, I am Josette, calling from French, near Australia. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, um, this is Lynn calling from Ohio in the United States. Welcome. Welcome. Maureen. I can see you're unmuted, Maureen, but I can't hear your voice. Welcome, Maureen. Michael. Aloha, everyone. This is Michael calling in from Hawaii. Welcome. And Victoria. Are you able to unmute yourself, Victoria? Hello, I'm Maria Victoria from Italy. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us just take a few moments of silence in this group space to align further and we bring to mind the triangle between Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity, invoking the highest energies in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, friends. We are opening now the group field for sharing, offering our impressions from the two weeks of meditation, now a topic of emergence of the new civilization through the advancement of human consciousness. As we share, please let us visualize the group chalice where we offer our impressions and thought forms related to spiritual laws and principles. And as we listen to each other and the group heart, we invoke the common good of all. So please unmute yourself or just raise your hand that if you're still muted, that we could unmute you. This is Anette from Denmark. We spoke last time about people who is not ready yet uh, to receive the new energy and therefore is going uh, backwards. Um, and I thought about a picture uh, uh, I heard about a long time ago that humanity is um, like um, on on a big uh, um, oil tanker in the in in the ocean, and humanity can walk on the deck in each direction they choose, and some of us are going the wrong way, but they can only go to the uh, back end of of the the tanker. Uh, they could choose to uh, spring in the water. But uh, this is only uh, a few uh, who does so. Uh, eventually, uh, the boat is always sailing in the right direction. And al although uh, they are trying to go uh, backwards, they are being led uh, by the boat, by, by the ocean, uh, in the right uh, direction, either they uh, want it or not. Uh, I, I think it's a very good picture for it. Thank you. Tracy just reminded me that uh, we uh, offered uh, some questions to guide us through reflection on this uh, topic uh, back during the full moon and asked me to put on the chat on the screen. So here it is, just as a support for our sharing. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you, Annette.
Uh, hi, Jill here. I've, uh, Annette's, uh, what Annette said was great, I thought. Um, I've been reading a book recently, Soul Centered Astrology by Alan Oaken. And I thought this part was um, quite relevant to what we're doing. One of the most important movements in the evolution of human consciousness at the present time is the requirement and the impulse that each individual be responsible for the direction of his or her own spiritual growth and development. This sense of personal responsibility as expressed in the age of Aquarius is very different from the nature of personal and collective spiritual unfoldment during the past world age. In the age of Pisces, especially as it manifested in the Western world, we were dominated by a number of orthodox theologies administered by patriarchal authoritarianism. The majority of these theologies have been based upon a theory of transcendental dualism. What this means is that the sexes have been treated as unequal in nature, leading to a tremendous oppression of the fem feminine. Moreover, this dualism has led to a great division in the minds of most people between the material and the spiritual. It has also given rise to an erroneous and guilt-ridden concept of sin, based on the assumption that humanity and divinity are separate in nature, as well as in manif manifestation. The degree of pain and social oppression which has arisen from such a socially sanctioned duality has been incredible in its scope, but pain will no longer be the vehicle of enlightenment and mystical revelation in the new age. We learn from the ancient wisdom teachings that male and female are two equal polarities in a constant dance of creativity. The purpose of this interchange is to establish more and more avenues for the expression of that whole within which these two polarities and all of their manifestations have their breath and being. Thank you. Hello. Can I go ahead? Hello, Keith. Yes, we can hear you, please. Thank you. Uh, um, listening to what was just read and what was said, um, the third sentence or question on your list here, the realization of our civilization's mission into the future, uh, processes, human consciousness, practical life. After the last few days of, I'm in the United States right now, of what's been going on here, there's been a lot of talk about equality and between race and gender. And I'm thinking that this is quite true throughout the ages. Um, and so I think education and acceptance, learning to open our mind to acceptance that we are all one and teaching people about, well, education, we have to be, the children have to be taught that everyone around the world is the same. There are many different cultures with many different languages and, and ways of living, but we are all one humanity. And so knowledge and education, which I think is, needed. Thank you. I think what you just um, quoted was amazingly accurate and profound. Um, I think that was you, Jillian. 
And uh, I, I think, um, according to DK, uh, one of the reasons for this, uh, as it turned out, or one of the effects of the causes that were important is that um, mind, they were trying to develop mind in humanity. Um, and so that there was a separation from feminine and a separation from nature that resulted in this effort. And um, um, a mind was trying to be brought to the forefront. But um, we have to, I believe we have to incorporate, again, as you said, the feminine aspects um, of our lives, which means nature, um, that um, third aspect of the Trinity, um, the natural um, material world. Um, and again, I, I keep bringing up the devas, but um, they're inviting us to work with them. And um, it is one avenue for bringing um, in the new civilization, for reuniting masculine and feminine uh, principles. And um, one uh, group that it, at least ideally has been trying to work with nature are the people involved in permaculture. Um, and I think the principles they've created often mirror um, divine law. Um, I was looking at that again um, in the last week. Um, I can give you some examples, for, for instance, um, one principle that they rely on is that every living thing has worth. Um, and let me see. I wrote some things down here. Uh, everything is connected to everything else is one of the principles. And it's this connection that matters. Everything gardens, they say, which means everything creates the conditions it needs. I think um, if um, governments and economic policies were in line with, with some of these principles, um, it leads to valuing diversity. Diversity is stability. Um, also, um, let me see what else. We need to build working relationships between elements. Uh, we need to connect things so that the needs of one element are filled by the yield of another. And in permaculture, if you have too much surplus, the whole system goes down. It doesn't work. So um, the uh, the governmental, well, the, the results of capitalism seem to be, the, a negative result seems to be that we have too much um, valuing of, well, need is what's kind of taking over. Um, and how things are looked at is, um, or, or what I'm trying to say is that um, there's too much um, attention. Well, let me see how I can say this right. I may have to let that one go. <laughs> but we end up um, paying too much attention and having too much focus on want um, and lack rather than in um, surplus and in uh, um, how much there is to share. We, we tend to pay too much attention to what's missing or what's lacking uh, and, and ending up in things um, that don't, don't help us. Okay, anyway. But I'm trying, I'm lacking some words here. But another another thing th that permaculture says is to turn problems into solutions, that everything is actually a resource resource. So if we can turn our problems into solutions and accept feedback and creatively use change. So all of those things I think work in permaculture as permanent culture as well as permanent agriculture and can be useful in government and um, economic issues. Um, so anyway, that's just one example of what I think is um, the spiritual trying to manifest in, in the uh, physical plane. I know there are other examples. 
um, in this exciting time to be alive, a time of change to a new age. Thank you. I am Josette. Uh, yes, I think it's true. Uh, everything is connected with everything else. Thank you. And uh, I think that the main next step for humanity is a consciousness of the unity. You are one humanity. We are one planet. And there is one life. And we have to learn to think and to act in the direction of this unity. Thank you. This is Annette from Denmark. Um, DK has told us that we are all connected uh, on the aesthetic plane, um, on the physical plane. Uh, we are uh, very different because we have to um, create uh, learning for um, um, our Earth. Um, and I think that uh, we are going to be more and more um, aware of the aesthetic plane uh, in, in the new in the future. Uh, we have already started because electricity and um, um, radioactive uh, rays and uh, all there that is is already in in the aesthetic plane uh, in the subplanes there we can't see it uh, uh, on the physical plane uh, but we know theoretical and uh, practical that it works we don't know uh, with everything why it works that way and and how it works but we know empirically uh, that it works and I believe that uh, uh, if, uh, the further we, we come in, in the Aquarian age, um, we will uh, be uh, more and more able to explore that, uh, that world um, and understand it better and therefore use it to, um, um, to our needs. Uh, uh, for instance, to find uh, some energy that is not um, uh, um, polluting um, the earth um, and is better than uh, what we have uh, available now. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. I understand that telepathy will be commonly used in the future. And I just wondered if there's anyone that has any idea of whether this is something that can be taught or whether it is something that happens when you reach a certain stage of consciousness. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, I think there are things that can be taught. Um, one of which is actually thinking 
rather than focusing on feelings. Feelings are, I'm not saying that feelings are not important, but we also need to uh, teach ourselves, teach our children actually how to think for themselves and, and not what to think. Um, we can teach spiritual or natural laws which is something I've been studying for a while. Uh, and I look at this uh, mission of our civilization, which if we look at root races, sub races and so forth, uh, this particular root race, sub race uh, is about thought. It's about thinking the mind and using thought, using mind to be better stewards of uh, the four kingdoms of nature, uh, which we are responsible for, the mineral, the vegetable, the animal, and the human. It seems to me that for many centuries, um, Humanity has been uh, pregnant, gestating the, the coming root race, the coming Aquarian civilization. And for a hundred years, we've been experiencing labor pains, maybe 200 years, we've been experiencing labor pains in order to bring forth the Aquarian civilization. Uh, the, the pains are getting worse and worse as uh, the birth is coming. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing, does it? But we are learning through that pain. And one of the, the laws to learn is the law of unity. Thank you. This is Anita uh, from Denmark. Um, I I agree that uh, tele telepathy uh, can be learned, uh, but I also believe it is coming naturally uh, with um, uh, the growth of consciousness. And I believe it is coming um, gently, uh, like, like um, um, in a family, when you are around each other uh, uh, much of your, the time, you uh, get accustomed to the other's uh, thoughts, and it is more easily uh, to um, to uh, telepathic. Uh, um, um, hear what or feel or sense what you others uh, are, are thinking and um, I have also tried to um, to be together with uh, a person who was uh, clearly ahead of me uh, uh, in, in consciousness and, and uh, uh, esoteric uh, development and I could one time sort of use him as an, a, a tenant and I could hear what he got a message about because I was sitting right be beside him and I believe that was because of um, I was near him and because um, we were talking and therefore um, tuning in on the same subject and therefore I could he hear what he was thinking or what he was told from uh, the other side um, of instructions. It was very exciting, but um, um, I believe that if you are together with someone with uh, um, a more advanced uh, consciousness that, than, that uh, you have, 
uh, you can sort of sense more than you normally can, uh, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both for your comments. Um, I suppose now in the new civilization, it will be a great help to use telepathy. There is one of the big books, uh, this is an edit. There is one of the, the, the um, books from Bailey that is called Telepathy, if anyone is interested. Thank you. I would also add that uh, Giovanni has um, written a, 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 a chat, something in the chat box. Thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting that uh, yeah, uh, you and also Tracy in the um, chat mentioned the book Telepathy, and there the case says that um, the actual term telepathy is very inadequate term to describe this uh, what he and the hierarchy calls as the science of impressions, and that the hierarchy itself uh, is still learning this science. And so, in a way, uh, our work, uh, of our small group, is an attempt, an experiment to uh, uh, meditate together and invoke the impression. So it's 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 a form of that what uh, commonly we call telepathy, but it's much more complex. And so that's what we're actually doing here and now. Yes, Rebecca, sorry for interrupting. No, not at all. I was just going to read um, from Giovanni. Thank you for putting this in here, Giovanni. Um, struggling with the English language or um, so he, Giovanni has said, I think that civilization can be distinguished from the quality of a life that advances in respect of the environment that contains it and that advances harmoniously in accordance with all lives of the context of existence. Observe how every single human being grows, what are the qualities already present and optimize them in order to be able to offer their services to the inhabitants of the neighboring um, and neighboring regions of it to our territory. In the future, humanity will have to completely review the approach we have to how we understand life by working above all on the purpose of this, both of the individual life and of the communities in which we live and grow. Having clear as it is in the human body, what type of cell we are and which organ we belong to will help us better understand our immediate goals. I'd like to share some impressions um, about the current um, crisis, as uh, I'm called here, this labors of uh, birth that humanity undergoes for the last um, at least 200 years uh, that result in emergence of the new consciousness, uh, individual and group uh, consciousness that allows us to come to the next level of uh, evolutionary development and uh, in a way becoming uh, this link between the spiritual 
kingdom and human kingdom and becoming who we are intended to be, like really humans uh, as a souls incarnated consciously uh, functioning as souls. Uh, and DK tells us that the crisis uh, uh, is, is, and he uses the words like social, social catastrophes, they, uh, it's one of the um, ways that can stimulate rapid development of uh, human consciousness. And even in our lifetime, and even in, like within the span of last uh, few years, we can see the acceleration of uh, uh, dramatic changes in our uh, environments that uh, for uh, some of us and uh, in some cases for many of us and most of us creates a situations when we are pushed uh, out of our comfort zones and that's what uh, makes us to move forward. Uh, if we think in terms of the larger cycles and the shift from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age, uh, and at the same time uh, retuning our uh, old mechanism from the sixth ray dominance to the seventh ray dominance, it creates a lot of turbulence. And one of the uh, uh, resulting qualities of these adjustments is uh, appearance of own uh, systems of moral navigation, so to speak. For centuries, uh, through the Piscean age and before, humanity being uh, morally guided by religion. Uh, and this was one of the main functions to uh, help uh, immature humanity to uh, move forward and sustain as uh, uh, civilization. And as we move into the new civilization and the old religions slowly by steadily uh, it, uh, lose their control on uh, human minds and hearts, we, uh, as Kant told us that we he, he, humans move to uh, being navigated by inner moral compass. And so it's emergence of own uh, moral compass individually and collectively. That's what characterized the emergence of the Aquarian uh, times. But here's a little uh, uh, caveat to this. In this transition period, it's a very vulnerable time. And uh, yesterday, um, Katya and I, we had a, a conversation, um, one of those many conversations about the war happening between our countries, between uh, Russia and Ukraine. And Katya uh, quoted one of the uh, Russian uh, opposition uh, uh, leaders who actually been talking about this, uh, about the collective moral compass. And uh, the, the image that he used uh, quite impressed me. He said that uh, he, there is um, a big metal ax being put under the uh, moral compass of a uh, Russian nation. And I don't know if you know what happens if you put like a compass, you know, actual physical compass, and you put an X under it, it creates the magnetic field that disturbs the compass, and the compass goes uh, cuckoo. And uh, if we, and that person wasn't esoteric at all, it was just like a, like a, uh, so, uh, a leader of thought, uh, a thought leader uh, in Russia. And, but if we think about like what that X 
under the moral collective moral compass. It's this uh, forces of materialism that uh, try to use this transition period to actually mm, re, 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 reroute our collective uh, process uh, and to discombobulate us collectively and uh, they lose our uh, orientation, what is right, what is wrong. And that's what pretty much we see. Like uh, many people, uh, they're confused. They traditionally want to listen to alternative medias and then they don't know what to believe. Uh, and so that's result of that um, informational warfare that's happening in parallel with active warfare and so if we think about that x and the forces behind that x uh, uh, influencing public moral compass the only way to counteract to that x is to uh impose the equally powerful force that can restore magnetic field so to speak and that's uh, what disciples can do, focusing the will to good and holding in meditative focus and understanding what we're talking about when we talk about spiritual laws and spiritual principles. Because that's the great magnet that cannot be disturbed. And it's our role to hold powerfully focus that magnet in collective consciousness and humanity. And so as we pre uh, prepare to meditation today, I uh, uh, one of the th uh, thought forms or seeds that I will be offering uh, is the, the law of right human relations and the principle of goodwill. Over. Uh, this is Lynn again. Um, interestingly enough, Alexander, um, DK gives the um, rays for uh, Russia as ray six and ray seven. So um, there is a big battle right there too between the rays. And um, he talks of the importance of Russia to the world. Um, I've, I've had this picture in my mind uh, since this battle was since shortly after the battle started between Ukraine and Russia of, um, I don't know, I can't explain it except that um, I get this visualization of the uh, of Russian people having uh, a major um, moment of enlightenment as a whole and um, recreating their national image as ambassadors of uh, connection and love. Um, hopefully that, that is true. Hopefully it will come true. Thank you. This is Darcy. The triangle that we are working with is uh, in connection with the hierarchy is composed of the Manu representing loving, intelligent life, the Christ representing loving, intelligent consciousness, and the Manakohan, the Lord of civilization, the third ray, representing loving, intelligent activity. And between these three, they represent every phase of group livingness, group expression, and group action. And these qualities focus through the Lord of the civilization. And the civilizations of humanity represents progressive growth and unfoldment. It also goes on to say that the outline of the new civilization um, presented to the people uh, and our task is that the substitution of order for chaos, which are we are using the third ray, 
the fifth ray and the seventh ray. And that through the activity, when correctly directed and used in right rhythm, because that is being imposed on all aspects of human living right now, an effort is being constantly made to arrest the ugly chaos of the present and to produce the ordered beauty of the future. We are, it states that our, the major weapon now being used by the combined forces of evil is chaos, disruption, lack of established security, and consequent fear. So the chaos produces indifference, it produces uncertainty, and, and, and it produces fear by starvation, insecurity, watching others suffer innocently, and the chaos produced by the warring and conflicting ambitious elements in every nation, without exception. Uh, Master R and the Manukohan, the Lord of Civilization, are attempting to deal. The task is one of supreme difficulty. The entire rhythm of international thinking has to be altered, and that constitutes a slow, arduous task. The evil personalities, which in every country are responsible for the chaos and uncertainty, have eventually to be replaced by those who can work in cooperation with the rhythm of the seventh ray and thus produce ordered beauty. And that's what will substitute the chaos. And I believe that we, as aspirants and disciples, have that capacity to be that triangle that represents loving, intelligent life, loving, intelligent consciousness, and loving, intelligent activity that will help to shift that great arc of justice that ultimately does balance and call forth that great magnetic force that will lead humanity, it says, to create, as Alexander brought out, the balance has to be brought about so that the noble middle way of right action and of right human relations can safely be trodden. And this is the work that consistently raises and awakens the, array, uh, the arising masses. Cancer deals with the masses. And it is through that enlightened um, uh, light that we bring in through the ray of ceremonial order that we're learning to work with. And that um, the Lord of Civilization, the third ray, and the Master R have combined their ashrams, the third, the seventh. And yes, um, to my dear sister who always speaks to the divas, those are the two ashrams that utilize the energy of the divas. So not only is humanity um, having to rise, but so are the diva kingdom. And this time has brought forth our opportunity to work um, intelligently with the diva kingdom to assist in this great um, international shifting of humanity onto the place of right human relationships. So it is a, a beautiful but arduous and sometimes a strenuous task. But to remember that humanity, we are not alone, and that our efforts are guided by the great ones upon the inner planes, and that perhaps everything that we're seeing is working out to create uh, the balance and the restoration and the hierarchical plan and restoring that onto the planet. And so uh, thank you all for your sharing, and um, I'm most grateful to be a part of this group and to shine that light into the new group of world servers. How lovely and deep and complete 
Thank you, Darcy. Um, I might just say too that that um, as we work as souls and as all people who are able work as souls, um, certainly that's what allows allows these these things to happen. Um, um, and if if we can um, keep focusing on finding leaders um, with right motives and ability and that link to higher consciousness. Um, because the work can't be done all in one way for all, for all places and all people. Um, but people, but those with higher consciousness are able to adjust uh, government structures, um, education and so forth um, in, in uh, localities and in, in our everyday lives and in the larger uh, group lives uh, adjust to um, what's needed by certain people in certain countries. Um, they can, hopefully through soul can recognize um, particular characteristics and stuff so forth that uh, bring forth the needed strategies and structures to enable everyone to um, function at a higher and higher level of consciousness. Also, um, I know DK says to us that um, mm -hmm. the sure way to um, um, abilities like telepathic ability and other psychic abilities is just to continue meditating, serving, studying, developing our own higher consciousness. Um, thanks. during the flow of the time um if anyone who didn't speak yet would like to share offer their impressions uh before we will start preparing for the meditation and uh, do our work So today our meditation will be led by Rebecca. And just to remind us that the format of this meditation is uh, something that we continue to try to find the right proportion of uh, silence and the words and allowing contributions from each of us. So in this sense, uh, it's it's uh, an experimental format. So we invite us to th think on the thought form or a seed thought that we would like to offer to the group chalice to be magnetized through our focused intention as a group holding that seed and that thought form in our focus to be radiated later. If you prefer to hold silence, that's uh, good. We all hold our group chalice and do our work. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alexander. So 
So let us move now into the stillness. And as we move into stillness and quiet, we recognize our spiritual community, the community which has been active in our conversation. And this includes all of us who are present on the call and those who are with us subjectively and those subtle spiritual and devic and hierarchical beings who bless and support our work. Becoming aware of our community. And we're aware now, we tune in to try to discern and be with the resonance emerging out of the threads of our conversation. Listening to that resonance, endeavouring to sense it, the resonance emerging from our conversation. And as we ground ourselves within this resonance, we align even more deeply with our own hearts, with each other's hearts, with the group heart. We align with our souls, with each other's souls, and with all souls. We align with the hierarchy, with the Christ, and with all those unseen beings who are present with us, assisting our efforts to think in new and more spiritual ways. Radiance are we, and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth. The inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. 
we reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. We visualize the glowing beauty of the meditation chalice that we form, which our work together feeds and fills. And we connect again with our topic, the emergence of the new civilization through the growth of humanity's consciousness. The emergence of the new civilization through the growth of humanity's consciousness. And we take a few moments in the silence to reflect on that resonance that we attuned to before. Letting our minds play over the threads of the conversation. The ideas expressed. Sensing the layers, the layers of thought that have precipitated across this month as the group has focalized the topic together. Emergence of the new civilization through the growth of humanity's consciousness. And let us take a few more moments now as we turn our attention to the seed thoughts that we would like to express. Allowing them to crystallize. Finding those words or images or sentences that capture the essence of the threads from the conversation that seem the most meaningful to us at this time. Just allowing those seed thoughts to precipitate.
and with love and crystalline clarity, we now sound our seeds, offering them into the chalice. Each of us speaking as we are moved to. And we allow each seed to rest in the silence for a while before the next one comes. The chalice is open and receptive as we place our seeds with dedication and clarity into its light. We are one in the one life. Uh, cooperation, just as our group members cooperate with each other in our work, so the civilization will bring humanity to cooperate with each other. A new birth of intelligent love. May the chalice be filled with impression from the group soul and from the hierarchy of light. Love, love is all there is. Through the focused expression of the growth of mass consciousness emerges the mass will to good. Focused will to good evokes awakening of soul consciousness in humanity in alignment with the principle of goodwill and the law of right human relations.
from Tracy, opening our heart chakras to the mantra, all for one and one for all. So let us now draw together the seeds within the chalice, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of the group vessel. Seeing our seeds radiating, hearing them, feeling them, vibrating within the group chalice. And seeing the resonance, hearing the resonance, feeling the resonance of our combined seeds filling the chalice, vitalizing its radiant light. Enhancing the beauty and wisdom of its tone as its light flows forth into the world. Flowing forth and expressing on the mental, astral and etheric planes. radiating to all receptive hearts and minds.
And as we seal our work together today, we sound together the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human mind. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Rebecca, and 
Thank you, friends. We continue our work. The next quarter moon meeting where the custodians of the purpose will come together to share and precipitate impressions on possible topic for our next Cancer Leo cycle will be happening in the next uh, week or so. Uh, it will be to the date and, and time will be decided via the Doodle poll. If you would like to be part of this meeting, please let us know and uh, you will receive information. Thank you again. Much love to everyone.